for just being able to move and breathe and just to think. This morning lesson, it says, proof of the resurrection. That is proof. Our lesson text is going to be from Luke 24, 36 to 53. Our related scripture is going to be Acts 1, 1 through 4, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 8, 1 John 1, 1 through 4. Our golden text, this is what we really want to focus on. It says, these are the words which I spake unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. That's Luke 24, 44. Today we're going to be our aims in the facts and the principles and application. The facts for today's lesson is to demonstrate how Jesus showed himself to his disciples to prove what, was the, um, what, had the, what the prophets had said about him was true. That is our facts. In today's lesson, we're going to want to know how Jesus demonstrated, Jesus himself showed himself to disciples to prove what the prophets had said about him was true. We got to know what Jesus said is true above everything else. No matter what the world says, no matter what we may feel, no matter what we may think, but what Jesus says. The principle is to confirm that when God give, it, um, when, when God gave, give us his promise, he keeps his word. No matter what nobody else say, but when God says something, it's sealed. We can't change it. We might not, you know, we probably don't understand it, but if he says it, it's done. Application is to affirm that we can always trust what God says to us because he keeps his promises. And those are the things that we're going to be learning today and this, um, the proof of the resurrection. And right now I ask that God, you please, that you may decrease me and that your words come forth me and that you use me and that I may just be example for what the Holy Spirit be used with me to do. God, I thank you for the word. I thank you for waking me this morning. I thank you for those who are here and those who are listening that they know who Jesus Christ is. These are the blessings I ask your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. We'll be reading responsibly the scriptures. And it says, Luke 24, starting at 36. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled? And why do thou, and why do thou arise in your and why do thoughts arise in your heart? And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and, of a hun and, and a honeycomb. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were in written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus is behold, Christ to be suffered and to rise from the dead the third day. And ye are witnesses of these things. And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and, unto, and, to, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Fifth three all together. And we're concerned, raising and blessing God's amen. This scripture was being so much to me. It's so funny what Sister Reed was saying that after Easter, that after Easter, 
<laughs> and, but I just love the scriptures. It says, and thus the speak to Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, peace be unto you. It's uh, when we see the scriptures and you sit there and people say, are they spirits? Are they ghosts? But it, I tell people, I don't know. I never saw one. But I know Jesus spoke to him and says, I'm not one. I am, I, am, I am the true living God. And when you go through something, and this is scripture, this whole parable to me, to me it, it is so important to me because it's, it's proof of the resurrection. I, I look at it and not so much put, I put myself in there and say, instead of not a resurrection, but me being revived and not being sick anymore, me not being able to do the things, I can do things, I, I'm, I'm revived. That's how I see it. And I sold this word, and, and before even, I just say, God, you are such a good God. Because we, we got to, what it means is you got to truly believe who Jesus is. And that is when you, we, we say that we love him, we believe in him, we trust in him. But we got to truly know that Jesus is Jesus. And when I was going through my trials and my valley, I call it valley because we all go through valleys. And when I was going through my valley, sometimes doubt came in me. I don't know about anybody, doubt came. And I, when I relate to the scriptures, because they didn't, they, they, they doubted it. And he says, I'm, that's who I am. And I was telling my husband sometimes, we, we doubt and we, th we think we're not doubting. And I truly, and I had to, I had to repent because, and I just love the words because in, in it, we're going to go back and I, I don't want to get off, but it says, he says, but they were terrified and afraid and supposed that they had seen a spirit. You know, that, doubt comes in us. Sometimes we don't really think that we're doubting, but we're doubting. And he wanted to know that don't, don't, don't doubt, believe who it is. And he said to them, why are you troubled? Why do, uh, why do thoughts arise in your heart? And that just, it brings back to me that like, I was going through some things, and I was telling my husband sometimes, I, I was trying to, you know, I was trying to have faith. I was trying to believe. I was, t I was telling myself this, I believe, I believe. But those are, those are thoughts will bombard you sometimes and you have to I guess the spirit said you have to pull those things down and you got to renew your mind and it was there and, I, and I, so it, it just to me when I read this word and it, it refreshing me that I wasn't alone we are not alone when we have doubts but God doesn't want us to have doubts we still want us to believe he says behold my hands and my feet that I may that that is I myself handle me and see for a spirit have no flesh and bones as you have seen you, if you see me have he said you got to trust the word and when Jesus left he only left us one thing that word he said I'm, I want you to hold on to that word and that is what I, I believe that we just sometimes as Christians, we don't hold on to that word. And we, we say, we, oh, I love Jesus. I believe in him. But it's that word that keeps us and bound us and makes us just not focus on anything else. Because I had to really, when I say, when I look at this, I put myself in this position where I was going through some trials and tribulations in my life, not saying that I wasn't believing in Jesus, but I was still having those pains in my body. I was still couldn't walk. I mean, for three months, I couldn't walk. So every time uh, I would see somebody walk, I would see, when I would see Rick walking, and then when I saw Sister Welch, I said, now, wait a minute, God. Now, she, I said, it wasn't the same surgery she had, but she's walking. So therefore, there, get, what happened was, those doubts come, yeah. And, and it's the enemy to say, see there, something wrong with you. And I'm just being honest with you. Sometimes we have those doubts, but we got to hold on to the word of Jesus Christ. He said, I am. And whatever Jesus says, that's what I had to believe. And it was, and it was, sometimes it was hard. And then somebody had to get out of my feelings. And he says, and when he said this, when he said, okay, I'm sorry, behold my hands and my feet, that is myself, handle me and see that, uh, and see, for a spirit hath no flesh and bones as you see as you see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. If you're gonna, he said, I'm, I want you to see this for him. Believe this for him. No matter what you're going through, I want you to believe. And, so, and, while, and while thou yet believed, not for joy, and wondered, he said unto them, have you, have any meat? He started thinking about, if, when you looked at that, these people were going through some things, and Jesus, out, out, out of all of everything he said, Okay, I hear what y'all saying. Y'all don't believe me because I'm hungry. That just puzzled me. Out of all the scriptures, he's sitting there. He's saying, okay, I hear you.
But do y'all got any meat? I'm ready to eat. So that shows me in my mind that you got to take everything off the plate. It's going, everything's going to be there, but you still got to keep on going. And that's what he says. He says, he says out of nowhere, he says, he said, and while thou yet believe not for joy and wonder, he said unto them, have you, any, have you here any meat? And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and of a honeycomb. And he took it, and he did eat before them. It seemed like that everything's going to be all right. No matter what you're going through, it's going to be all right. God, can, Jesus said, I'm going to continue it. I want you to believe in me. But if you don't, it's still going to keep on going on. And that's what, it, just, it, it puzzled me. I said, out of all that scripture, out of, am I the only one thought that was strange how Jesus said that? Y'all got any food? No matter what we go through, he's still here for us. Even though the situation may be there, Jesus is still there. He is always there, and he, he has a loving arm. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. He said, all these things have been written before. And so it's just bringing back to your remembrance what Jesus said. And, that's, and I, I hold that dear to my heart because I can remember people, just, you know, even my prayer, I'm praying to God, heal me, I'm healed. So I got to, now I have to walk, it's been already written. He says, because I, I go back to on the cross and he said, he said, with every stripe that he took, that was for my healing. So that's why I had to now trust in what I was believing. He said, every stripes that Jesus took on that cross, everything that he did, it was for me. So for my sins, for my forgiveness. And so that's when you have to hold on to what God has said. Even though when you're going through things, even though life seems to be un, un I, 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 I always tell, it's not fair. Life is not fair. We don't like things. But you got to hold on to what God says and believe what he says. He, said, he then opened their, um, their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. He gave us that word, that deep word, that sometimes when you just get by yourself and you just spend time with him, your understanding will come. As they say, by and by, it will come. You will get the understanding who Jesus is. And the, and said unto them, this is written, and thus is it, behold, Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. I thank God that he did it. I thank God that he, he didn't take it robbery to, not, to die for my sins. Because where would I be? He says, and that repentance and remission of sins shall be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. He said, my name, he said, he said, his repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. The name above all names, Jesus. I, um, and I concur with um, Minister um, Gaines last week. He said, King Jesus. We don't put the reverence on that. And I thought about that. We don't. We, we really don't. He is the highest and most high God. We can't look at anything else but King Jesus. And said, and you are witnesses of these things. I'm sorry, I'm go back to the book. He said, and the repentance of the remission of the sins shall be preached in his, um, in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witness of these things. And behold, I send a promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endured with power from on high. Boy, that is the most powerful thing when you can say that the, the Holy Spirit can come upon you. And I give you my testimony. I'm telling you when I, when I read the scriptures, it says, when you get power, I never forget it was a Sunday. And I was in the, me and my husband, I was in the bathroom. And when I completely got up on my own and walked, it shocked me. Because I hadn't walked in four months. Literally, I had, I've been on a walk and I was leaning on I've never been able to walk on my own, be able to stand on my own. But I, when I tell you, the spirit came in there, I, I was like, he, he looked at me, I, I was shouting. I was, I, 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 I don't know what I said, because I think I was uttering tongues. I was speaking. I was, I was, I don't know. I think that bathroom got tore up that day. Literally, I was in a peace that came on me. And 
But then again, here come the devil. That, that always, I'm saying, it's always a process that you have to renew your mind. It just, just I mean, I'm just shouting and rejoicing, and all of a sudden, and I, I felt like Peter, because doubt came. Because all of a sudden, I'm like, am I really walking? And then I, you know, you, that, that I felt like Peter, how Peter sunk. And I started to be like, I had to catch myself, I am walking. And that's, the, that's what I'm saying. We have to really know when Jesus does something to us, we got to believe it. We got to walk in it. And every day is a renewing thing. Because those, I mean, those th- thoughts, and I just love it. He said, yeah, he, Jesus said that. Doubt not. Doubt not. And I wonder why he always say doubt not. <laughs> because we do. We doubt. We let this flesh start to take over, and it just, it'll put thoughts in our heads. And I said, Lord, I thank you. He said, and you be a witness of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon, uh, upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you endure by power from on high. Thank you, Jesus. And he led them out as far as to Bethany and lifted up his hands and blessed them. He walked with them. He talked with them. And so it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried into the heavens. Can you just, I, I just, in my mind, just blows me to be seeing that you just walking with Jesus. And he talking, he blessing you, and he telling you all things. And all of a sudden, and he says, and it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into the heavens. And they worshiped him, and they returned to Jerusalem with a great joy, and were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. On, God. Just imagine that you are praising God because you see what you see without a, uh, without a shadow of doubt. And that's what, I mean, I look at this right here. It's just the knowing that Jesus died for my sins, that he come and he just said, you know what? I'm going to bless you. I come not for myself, but for you. And it's just a blessing to know that we are truly serving a living God. He's not dead. And sometimes it may seem that after Easter Sunday, you see that it's like it, it kind of dwelled down. It's, I guess, because, you know, my husband has a saying that we, people be in their emotions. You know, we be all high, we be excited. We do, are we really truly worshiping the true living God? Because it's, it's a continuous thing. It's just not one Sunday, then I skip a Sunday, and then until I need him. But it's a continuous thing. And it's just knowing that Jesus, who he is, he is an awesome God. He, he deserves all our praises. It's just not only a, a, a day. It's every day. It's just not, say, Easter Sunday or Palm Sunday. or the day. It's every day that we're supposed to be worshiping God. It's every day that we're supposed to be giving him the glory because he deserves everything that we have because it was him that woke us up this morning. And I just, I just, just praise his name because everything that God has given us, he's given us the most important thing and that was his love and by his loving us so much he said I will die for you that you would not die in your sins and go to hell to me that's a great honor the knowing that I, I just just I thank him for it because God is a good God and I know that we cannot doubt and we got to believe that he is who he say he is and if God tells us something we got to walk on that and if he says my most important you know the word says you know don't forget to assemble yourself together that means come together, pray together, hold one, hold one each other accountable in the Lord. If we're wrong, tell me I'm wrong, but in love. But I take that back because sometimes we say that in love, but it's what God says. I may not like it. A lot of times people say, well, you know, we got to correct people in love. I, got, I think that we have to correct them in Jesus because He's the only one that can save us. Because when we try to do it in love, that means we try not to hurt your feelings. We want to be easy. We want to be soft. But if God says, don't do it, and I'm doing it, and you see me doing it, correct me. If I don't like it, then I'm in my flesh then. But we have to do it in a godly way. Wrong is wrong. Right is right. There is no in-between with God. you either for him or you're not. You got to, and that's that's the whole thing, trust. You got to know without a doubt. No doubt, because there you go, doubt. If you you have doubt, you don't have trust. 
you truly got to have trust. You got to truly believe that Jesus, everything that he says, and when those doubt come, you got to, you got to put those words to, to life. So when doubt comes, you read, the, you, you find that scripture. But it's so important to know the word. And how do you know the word? You study the word. How you study the word is become by coming and being a part of. But it's, it's got to be a relationship. You have to have that first wanting to do it yourself. Because I don't. No matter how much I can want somebody to do it, I can't make them do it. I love you, and I can. I, I, my children, I tell them, I love y'all, but I can't make them do anything because they're grown now. You know, when they were little, when they live, and well, they still know when they live in my house, they still have to follow my rules. But when they were little, you know, I made them come to church. They, they, you ain't had no choice but to be in church. You're going to be there. They're adults now. And I, I don't think I can tell them and pray that the, what I've taught them, that it's sick. And I know, I know the, word, the word of God says that if I teach them, it's going to be embedded in their hearts. So they're going to know. So we got to pray that we know that we teach our children. But first of all, we, we got to have a relationship for ourselves. Because I can't teach somebody if I don't have it and I'm not loving God because it, it got to be with me. And since we, it's got a personal thing. No matter how much we want somebody to be saved, they got to want it for themselves. They can't want it for you because it's, it's not going to last. Because it's going to be superficial. It can't last. And it, it's not going to have a root. So they got to want, first of all, want to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And when they, have, when they want it, is it going to be easy? No. But they got to if they really truly want it, it's that's the first foundation, really wanting to have a relationship with Jesus. And I said, without doubting him, without believing, without believing nothing else but what Jesus says is going to happen, holding fast on that word, that's the only thing going to keep us and make us truly what God wants to be.